Hi, this is uh, the Illinois Space Society. I'm Sarah. I'm Shivani. And we are here uh, on working on our exhibit for the 2019 Engineering Open House here at the University of Illinois. Um, and so this is the exhibit that we created. It's called Rocket Surgery. Um, so this exhibit aims to show uh, all the different components that go inside of a rocket as well as all the different considerations that you need to take when designing a rocket. So do, do you want to go ahead Absolutely, and take yeah. it apart? Absolutely, yeah. So our approach really was that um, sometimes <laughs> as freshmen uh, in our club, we are always wondering what actually goes into it. So we decided to use an acrylic body tube um, and just so everyone can see actually how it all fits together. Um, in addition to that, a lot of people don't know like the various components of flight. Even though mm -hmm. rockets go up and down, there's actually a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. So we created an additional LED board that correlates different parts of the flight. And it actually goes with um, a video of one of our old rockets um, to show mm -hmm. kids this is our illustration and this is how it is in real life. Yeah. And hopefully everybody gains mm -hmm. something from the exhibit. Yeah, so a quick overview of the rocket itself. Um, so it's kind of broken up into different components. We've got the upper airframe here, so or we've got the nose cone first, right? So that breaks apart. The nose cone is connected to the uh, parachute, the main parachute, which is also connected to the brains of the rocket. And this upper body tube basically holds it in place. We then have the brains of the rocket, which is called the coupler. It contains all the different electronics, and in this case, the coupler connects to our main LED board. And then finally, the coupler connects to the uh, a smaller parachute that helps slow down the rocket upon flight, uh, which is stored in the booster tube. The booster tube itself has the fins attached as well as the motor mount tube where we place the motor. Uh, so this is an example of how we build our high-powered rockets within the society. Um, this is obviously different for actual industry rockets, um, but these are the different considerations that we just need to take into account different parachute sizes, when we're gonna use the parachutes at different altitudes. Um, so yeah, and so this is the LED board that we have here, kind of shows the different phases of flight. Let's see if we can show it working. So this is when the rocket itself launches, it's splashing green. Now it's started to uh, show its powered flight. Uh, this section of the flight is when it's going through its unpowered flight after motor burnout. Um, so you can at see the, at the apogee, which is the peak mm -hmm. altitude, it deploys our um, uh, drogue parachute, which actually would be this one. Then it's uh, coasting downwards uh, with the help of the parachute, um, and at this point, it actually deploys the main, which is in the upper airframe right over here. That's typically a much, much bigger parachute that helps it slow down. Um, so it'll stay in the drogue phase for a bit, um, and then eventually transition into the main parachute phase. The at this point, the main parachute would just have been ejected. It keeps slowing down and eventually it'll land, hopefully safely on the ground, so that and we can use it for one future. Piece.